Good morning, good morning. Right, it's time to start your day. So, you're looking for a job on the CX? Let's go through it together. First of all, look for as many jobs as you can, but read the description. So, you're looking at jobs, say, let's say you're in a long wheelbase, you got it loaded to long wheelbase and everything's smaller. So, read it. Job comes up, say, Manchester to uh, Slough. You go, oh, I can do that. I know how much I'm going to bid on that, I know how much I want per mile. I can do that. But then you click on the job, you look down into the notes and it says flatbed. And you go, oh, I've not got a flatbed. Make sure you read them notes before you put that quote in. I've had loads of people, I've put long wheelbase, extra long wheelbases up for flatbed jobs and people with just panel vans send me quotes all the time. It's very annoying. Then check if there's a weight on it. Some long wheelbases can only take a ton, some can take a bit more. So if that, if you're clicking on that job and going, oh, I can do that and it weighs 1300 kilos, you can't do it. Make sure you can do it before you put that po put, put that job in. <laughs> put, <laughs> put that quote in. It's the same with Lutons. They might be asking for a curtain, you might have a box, might be the other way around, etc., etc. Might say, small van. We need to take a meat at all. Well, it's not a small van then, is it? It's going to be a small wheelbase. But they've still put it up as a small van, so you need to keep an eye on it as well. So then, once you check in, bid on as much as you can. Don't bid on one job hoping for it. Bid on as many jobs going the way you want to go or anywhere in the country from your, where you are. Just get them all bidding on. Easy. Right. Put the price down that you want. Don't be like, oh, I'm in a long wheelbase and it's a small van job, so I'm going to quote down low just to try and get the work. Don't do that, because you're running yourself for no reason. You're running your van for no reason. Quote on the work, your van rate, your size, what you need to run properly. When you're putting that bid in as well, I would suggest put the ETA on. Sorry about that. The uh, guy opposite me is just reversing into the unit next door and she's reversed into the wall. So it's just me being nosy. Um, right, so where was I? Yeah, put your collection time on your bid, how far away you are from the collection. And say you're charging an extra 30 quid because you're 15 to 30 miles away. Fucking <laughs> big ass cats just come up from the van. Yeah, say you're 30 miles away and you want to charge that extra 30 miles onto the job. Put that in the description as well, just to explain to the shipper why you're charging what you are. So then, you get the job. You get the job you want, you get good money on it. Wait for that confirmation to come through and read it. I've done this before. I had a job off a shipper. Confirmation came through, I didn't read it. It got to the site, job got cancelled. The confirmation said... Cancel cancellation fees, ten pound for a long wheelbase. Ten pound. So, if you want to dispute anything like that, do it before you even set off. Phone them up. Say, this job gets cancelled. I want thirty quid, fifty quid, whatever your cancellation fee is. I'm not agreeing to your terms. We need to get something in place straight away. Get the person you spoke to his name if they agree to it. If not, you might not want to do the job, you want to try and find another job. But stuff like cancellation fees, handball fees, waiting time, make sure they're all agreed before you actually go and do that job. Because otherwise it just turns into a back and forth between you know, where they want it done for as cheap as possible, you want decent money for it, and you end up getting crap because they put it in their terms and conditions and you've not read it. Um, yeah, also, when they send that first notification through, it'll say if they need a hard copy, if they need pictures taken on site, if they need it posting, how long it is on payment terms, and everything like that will be in that first confirmation. So you need to check it, make sure everything's right, make sure your price is right, make sure the payment terms are right, and see if you do need to post it to them or they just want it by the CX or by email. So you get to your collection point, so what's the first thing you do? Obviously, you introduce yourself 
as your customer. So say you're going in for Freddie Fletcher Limited, you introduce yourself as Freddie Fletcher Limited, I'm here to pick up such and such, go into such, so where? Uh, and they go, right, yeah, we know who you are. Uh, thanks for that, we'll get you loaded shortly. What I always do, and a lot of shippers not ask for it, but if I'm doing a job on the CX, what I always do is once the van's loaded, strapped everything down, everything's secure, I'll take a picture and I'll upload it as a document to the CX. Just as proof that everything on my van is secure and it's there and it's where it should be. Uh, you don't need to do it, but I would recommend it. It's a good like little habit to get yourself into. And then as well, while you're there, make sure you're polite and uh, pay patient. So, little story here. I sent a driver in to a job for myself recently. And it was a small van job. And this driver um, actually put a quote in, cancelled his quote, put a cheaper quote in, cancelled his quote, put a cheaper quote in. And he had immaculate feedback. So I phoned him and said, why did you keep dropping your quotes? He went, I really need the work. We've got a couple of vans. We've not got anything out for tomorrow. Normally we've got everything sorted by now, but I've not got anything sorted. So I said, right, the job's yours. Anyway, you got immaculate feedback. You seem to know what you're doing. And you said you've been to the collection point before, so bonus. So the collection was between eight and half eight. At quarter past seven, he texts me saying, I'm on site, they've said the reference doesn't work. So I said, you're gonna have to wait to between eight and half eight when my customer comes in so I could double check the reference. Right, right, no problem. What happens then? My, but my, but my, but my, but non-stop messaging me. I've spoke to this guy, I've spoke to that guy, I've spoke to this guy. I'm like, I can't do anything until my customer's in. You're gonna have to wait. So at quarter past eight, I got the final text off him saying, I've been here for over an hour. I'm not waiting any longer. Uh, you owe me cancellation fee and waiting time. I went, well, you're only just supposed to be there, so you're not getting any waiting time. And cancellation fee, I've not cancelled the job, you're cancelling it on me if you don't want to be there. So he's, a little back and forth in, in shoes. And at the end, I got that fed up. Project. Right, I'll pay you your cancellation fee, get off site now. I'm not, I won't, I'm not using you again. And two seconds later, after sending that message, I got the new reference through to pick up. So I thought, oh. So I swallowed my pride a little bit and I texted him saying, right, this is the reference. If you've got to pick it up and do the job, pick it up and do the job. Like, I'm paying you good money for it. It's up to you. My reply was, I've got another job now. Within two seconds, he got another job. So uh, that cost me a cancellation fee and rebooking the job out. So it cost me money because that driver wasn't patient and he kept miring and miring and miring. And theoretically, I shouldn't have even paid him a cancellation fee, but I did because I'm too nice. So my rant is over there. Right, so you're loaded, you're on the road, you're driving down, you've got three and a half hours to go. So then your shipper's gonna go, right? He's loaded at 1 p.m. He's gonna be there for about half four, five o'clock. I say five o'clock, cause a bit of traffic, quarter past five maximum. You get stuck in half an hour of traffic. Get on the phone. I'm gonna be late. I've been stuck in traffic, I'm here. And they'll know this because you'll have your CX tracker on and they'll be able to see it all anyway. So they know you're not messing them about, you're not cold loading, you're not doing anything else. You're doing your job, you've just hit a bit of traffic. Don't stress, stay calm, get it delivered as quick as you can. But don't break the law, don't speed, don't go do anything daft like that. So you're there, you arrived a little bit late, you're at your delivery point, or you're on time, whatever, you're at your delivery point. I've got this for you, sir. Be polite. Don't matter what sort of mood they're in, that fault truck driver might be having the worst day of his life. You be nice and kind and like polite towards him. It might make his day. It might not get you anywhere. It might get you off loaded quicker. You never know. Just be nice, be polite, don't be rude. Right, so he's off loaded you with a fork truck. You got your POD signed. Make sure you've got that full print. First name, last name, quite a lot of shippers want it. 
Uh, obviously, if there's any handballing off, you need to phone the shipper and agree at first. If there's any waiting time, obviously phone that shipper. What I do with waiting time is, personally, I give half an hour for free, then after half an hour, I start charging per half hour. So say I'm there for 40 minutes, I probably won't charge anything. But from there for an hour, I'll charge half an hour. From there for an hour and a half, I'll charge an hour, etc., etc. Some people charge smaller vans charge like 15 minutes, half an hour, and uh, obviously if you're in trucks, you probably give an hour free and then start charging after that. So then, their yard's busy. So get off their yard, find somewhere to pack up, get your POD on, and get it sent over to them with any other information you got, any pictures or anything like that, and close the job, as long as there's no waiting time to be added or anything like that. If there is any waiting time to be added or anything like that, or don't close the job because you can't add anything onto it once the job's closed. So then, your job's finished. You start looking for your next job. Make sure though, you know if you need to post it out that you do it either later that day or you send your invoice over by email whenever you're ready to do so. If you don't on the CX, I believe you can generate an email, uh, invoice straight away after completing the job and send it over. If you don't use the CX, obviously you have to put everyone's data into another software, create an invoice for them and send it over to them. That is whatever you do. So there you go, that's the full run through of doing a job on the CX. Hopefully that helps some of the newbies out. And I do, I really do suggest when you are putting your quotes in on jobs, let the shipper know how far away you are. Don't lie, because you don't want to be turning up late. So, so if you have a look on the app, when you're looking at the map and it goes, you're 30 minutes away, just put your 30 minutes away, but you'll be there as quick as you can. Because then as they know as well that if they don't book that job out for another 30 minutes and they need somewhere there, their ASAP, they can't use you because you're too far away and that's their own fault. And uh, do your best not to get any negative feedback. So yeah, I do hope that helps some of the newer guys out there. Uh, please do like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye bye.